Just to go back in again So people never see the sun before they life in No compromise and major profits of the time now We slowed it down and put the soul back in it now Jump around being crunk, Joe, this out of here Trying to sound in the street, <laughs> out of here In the game just for dope, brother, us out of here No doubt you are, it's timeless and we ain't going out Yeah, you are, we ain't going out This is timeless, y'all, we never going out I represent the untalented nine ten, so it's heaven sent. Mind baffling logic, oasis in the desert, blossoms in the streets. Sorry, not this afternoon, but on a Friday morning with Naledi Zondi, um, we are so excited that she's with us. Uh, in such a time as us in the month of June, we're focusing on youth and young people and uh, taking a moment to consider uh, stories of, of, of life, thought leadership, uh, some activism, ideas of pursuing a culture shift and a, and a better future. So in this conversation today, I'm looking forward to being uh, um, just hanging out with Naledi Zondi in studio. So if you're out there, welcome. Uh, you're welcome to say hello on the chat line or even prep by if you know Naledi, you can say hi to her and we are landing on Facebook Live. So thank you for being with us. And over the next uh, 40 minutes, we get to be in conversation with Naledi Zondi. I see that she's in studio and uh, as she comes in, I want to just say welcome to her. So Naledi, thank you for arriving with us and um, it's good to have you in. Are you here, Naledi? <laughs> Yes, I, I can hear you. I can see you. I don't know if you can hear me or you can see me. Yes, we, I, believe, I believe we can. I believe we can. And, and it's, good to, it's good to see you. How are you doing? I, I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having me. This is so exciting. Well, uh, I'm, I'm also quite honored. I know it's been a busy week for you. Yes, it has. It's been it hectic. Has. Yeah, I think when you work alone, you learn that you need to be in multiple places at the same time. So it's very hectic. Yeah, and I know that on on uh, on Sunday you did your SABC. You know, they profiled your work. They profiled what you're doing. How how did that go? How was the the broadcast with SABC? Um, I, it was really cool. It was the first time where the team actually came over to my studio because the last time I was on Morning Live, it was just virtual. So this time I really got the full experience and it was live. So it was very scary, <laughs> but it was, I think the team made me, you know, comfortable and I, I really enjoyed myself. It was a cool experience. Awesome. Now, Lely, I know that I'm coming from Johannesburg this morning and you coming out of KwaZulu-Natal. So where's your studio at and, and where, where are you based in, uh, in, in, in South Africa? So I'm based in Durban in Pine Town. Yeah, that's where I've lived since high school. And yeah, that, that's where my home studio is. Good. So as you hear Naleli talking about a home studio, you might be wondering, oh, what, what's all of this about? Home studio and so on and so forth. Let me say a little word of intro about Naleli. She said I should say Naleli Zondi, a.k.a. Naleli Art, because that's what she is <laughs> all about, Naleli Art. Uh, and mm -hmm. and it's, it's her whole work around investing in art. It appreciates visual arts and photography. 
And as she said, she's coming out of Pine Town in Durban, KwaZulu Natal. So those uh, Durbanites out there and KwaZulu Natalians out there, we yell mm -hmm. with a with a homebody from from KZN. This is a statement from her profile, and, and I'll read it to you as we intro her into this place this, this morning. I am to make art a conventional, I aim to make art a conventional form of investment among our black community by making art more accessible and affordable. I focus on realism portraits and expressionist art for my personal exhibitions and collections. My art is inspired, is inspired by African themes such as black history, culture, African aesthetics, authentic African people and ins inspirational black people. As a self-taught artist, I work to be an example that that's pursuing art as a career is pos possible, especially in these modern times where women are afforded more opportunities. I create for everyday people with everyday budgets. So if you're out there, this is an everyday artist for everyday people with everyday budgets. And I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of lingo that I just love here around her consciousness, her awareness. And so friends, uh, without further ado, if you, if you just came online, we in studio with Naledi Zondi and we wanna just get to know a little bit more about her. Naledi, yes. why art and, and what's all of this about? And, you know, black history, culture, the authentic African people, where, where does this consciousness and awareness come from in this young body, young adult <laughs> mind of yours? Mm. So I think I always say that um, art found me. It wasn't really the other way around because in high school, I took art as a subject. So from grade 10 to matric, I did art like as a main subject and I loved it. It was like so incredible. Every experience, I learned something new. And obviously like if you love something, you do really well in it. And I got really good marks and I got the art award in matric. So obviously everyone thought that I would study arts in varsity. But reality is that sometimes, like, especially with our parents and our teachers, they feel that if you're an academic, it's better to study something academic instead of doing something that's more skill-based that you already know. So they felt that because I already know how to draw, how to paint, it would be beneficial for me to have another skill when I'm looking for a job. So I studied retail business management at DT. I got my DTEC in 2019. So that's when I graduated. When I graduated, I felt that I was very employable because, you know, I was educated young person in South Africa, you know, who just graduated. And I've been working in retail for four years from first year till um, my fourth year. So I felt like my CV was strong enough, you know. So um, I stopped working in December and then I was waiting to graduate in 2019. And I just couldn't find a job that was fitting for the skills that I had. And I realized that if I go into retail now, I'll probably earn 4,000 Rand as a sales assistant, wait maybe two years to be a, uh, maybe like um, uh, a team leader. And then another two years to be an assistant store manager and another four years to be a manager and another five years to be a, you know, a regional you know, manager. So I realized that this is, this is not what I want to do. I can't wait this long. And then I started, doing what I know, you know, the skills that I have that I was born with that I don't have to think about. I started doing art. So I created an art piece uh, for the head of PRC with the help of Simo Nzama, of Simo Possibilities, who was the one who, was, who said to me, why don't you just use the skills that you have, start something, and then if a job finds you, then, you know, it'll find you. So when I created that art piece, uh, I was hired to be a speaker at Articulate, art, uh, Articulate Africa Book and Art Fair. Uh, I spoke for young people who had not studied arts but are pursuing art careers and how being educated you know, in the arts is very scarce in South Africa and how it's important, but because of reality, it doesn't stop artists from practicing art and being artists just because they haven't studied art. So that was the conversation. And I came in as like a wild card because I was with professors and doctors who had studied all of the stuff and all they spoke about is theses and, you know, all these, you know, dictations and all the stuff. So it was very like- All the academic stuff. Like, it was just loading yes, you in there. all the academic stuff. And I was just like, 
drowning in this conversation. So when I spoke, I, a lot of people related to me because I was speaking about something that's a reality for a lot of young people that, yes, I haven't studied arts, I am educated, but I, I really don't have a piece of paper that qualifies me as an artist, but I know this and I live this and it's who I am and I'm doing this and I'm, you know, it's working out for me. And yeah, that's a lot of people that, you know, have studied something academic or are in corporates, but they really, really love art and they really want to do it, but they're scared to do it because of financial situation. So that's been my journey. I think a lot of my journey has just been God taking over and using me as a tool to show young people that you can follow your passion and things work out. And obviously it won't be glamorous or you won't get millions at you know, in the beginning, but as time progresses, people get to know your brand and they get to know who you are. And sometimes people fall in love with the story as well. So they really invest in your journey. And that's really what's been happening to me. And it's, it's, it's I don't see it as being a big deal because I'm such a chill person. I'm just here painting and drawing. <laughs> and everyone's just like, oh my gosh, this girl's so amazing. I'm like, really? Okay, thank you. You know, so wow, that's... Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> So, so Naledi, you said something, you know, they fall in love with the story. And right there, I want to cut away right now to a national mm. campaign that I've been a part of for many years. Mm. Um, and it's with the organization of Heartlines and many other partners that we've worked around the country. And in some mm. way, as we, as we prep for this moment, I've asked Naledi to, you know, in, in a way, we've heard some bit of a story already about the academic side and, and, the, and the, uh, the journey towards her business, which is... Naledi Art. So if you're out there uh, in KZN or in Johannesburg or around South Africa, if you're around the world, wherever you're at, mm. check out Naledi Art. And I'll have Naledi tell you a little bit more at the end of the show where to find some of our exhibitions and so on. But we want to prep a moment for some personal storytelling. And if you're out there as a young person or a, a young entrepreneur, maybe an unemployed youth, um, people might say, but ah, what's, what's the power in the story? Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I'd like to, 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 to pause, stop the clock, you know, in a way, because when we come back from this break, as we watch this video, Naledi is going to take us, if I may, behind the academic arena, behind speaking, behind the artwork and tell us what she's thought about to inspire maybe an entrepreneur that's out there today, something from her own personal story. So thank you, Naledi. Let's take this moment right now as we cross to this amazing video. Uh, by Heartlines that captures captures the essence of a national campaign uh, where Heartlines together with their, their colleagues um, and, 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 and myself as well over, over, the, over the many years that we've been involved in, in this work, we've been able to, um, to get together with people all across the country. And so um, in this way, we've seen the power of story. Uh, so let me, let me get this going right now. And as we do, we're going to come back live with Naledi Zondi as she tells us a little bit about her own, her own story. So check this out. The world moves fast around us. Sometimes it feels like a blur. We pass each other and make judgments of each other constantly. You're doing it right now, seeing this woman across the street. We cross and recross, but rarely connect. We struggle to understand each other, so we don't trust each other. I know your name, but I don't know who you are. You know my name, but do you know my story? What would help us see beyond our perceptions? Story. Our stories are what make us human. Stories have the power to overcome our perceptions. Sharing a story isn't hard. It's a simple human act. Connecting us deeper to people we already know. Reach out. Ask. Invite. Then listen. Truly listen. Stories have the power to overcome our perceptions. They help us understand. Ask. Listen. Tell. It's our way of building our nation. 
Heartlines has developed resources to help you on this journey. These resources will empower you to build understanding, trust and reconciliation through personal storytelling. Imagine if we were part of a powerful wave of change, one story at a time. We all have a story to tell. What's your story? from heartlines uh, and the reality of work that one can consider the power of storytelling. I'm in studio with Naledi Zondi uh, and I'm going to ask you to come right back on screen right now as we come back. Hey Naledi, good to be with you. There's some <laughs> folks that are online with us already viewing some of the, of the stream. So it's great that people are enjoying it and I hope more people will get to know a lot about AKA Naledi Art. Now, Larry, this is the moment we want to cross into storytelling. I, I, I have enjoyed doing this work over the last seven years in South Africa with young people, youth organizations, faith organizations, and even corporate organizations where we're able to draw on the power of personal story. And when, when a person, uh, you know, captures their story, there's, there's power in it. Um, a, a writer by the name of Brene Brown says, you know, you either stand outside your story and hustle for your worthiness or, and I'm paraphrasing, or you embrace your story and then there's no need to be hustling anymore for your worthiness. And I know as entrepreneurs out there and young people that have to be on the hustle, they got to make a plan, but we don't yeah. want anybody to be hustling for their worthiness. So yeah. friends out there, we have Naledi Zondi in studio. We're going to cross to this moment where she gets a moment to tell you a little bit about, if I may say, the story behind what you see, the story mm -hmm. that gets to the aesthetic, beyond the aesthetics and gets yeah. to the heart of the matter. So Naledi, over to you for this personal storytelling time with you. Yes. So, well, I don't know where to start. It's so broad, you know, with the personal story, because I never get to speak about myself, per se. I usually just have to speak about the art, explain my art journey and, you know, relax, because it's the same thing over and over again. But for a change, I think uh, maybe a lot of people don't know the Naledi behind Naledi Arts. Yeah. So I grew up with my grandmother when I was very little. So you know when a child grows up with their grandmother that they have a great childhood. Like it's, it's just always amazing. Uh, my grandmother was very um, entrepreneurial. So she used to sell like a lot of things. We had a little store at home. And so I grew up in entrepreneurship. So that's what I always imagined myself to be in, that I, I can sell ice to an Eskimo. I studied retail. So with selling and retail, it's, you know, it's in my blood. So when I grew up with my grandmother, she taught me a lot of different things about me, who I am and who I'm supposed to be. So within my childhood, um, primary and high school, I've always been around people that treat me like the person that I will become instead of just as a lady in that moment. So with the high school that I went to as well at Pine Sound Girls High School, they always treated us like the people that we aspire to be. So if you want to be a doctor, they, they hard on you, they push you and they have high expectations because they see you as the doctor that you will become already. So that's like where I come from and you know the world that I live in that we have high expectations of ourselves and we want to see ourselves do better. So I think growing up, I was really, I was a very bubbly child. I was always out there. I, I've never been afraid to do anything. I've done a lot of different things. I've been in modeling. I've been in music. I've been so in public speaking. Um, I've, I was I joined an organization called the Nexus at DU Team, and I was one of the speakers or the the, the program directors and all that stuff in 20, from 2017. So we would travel and we'd go and, and compete against other schools, starting businesses for people that can't afford to, you know, have resources for themselves. So I, I've been in business with different types of people and learning, you know, different types of worlds. And, you know, so I think with exploring and trying to tap into different markets, different, um, you know, industries, I've learned myself and understood what I'm good at. And yeah, so with art, 
that's why I said before that art found me. I didn't really, I've always known that I wanted to be in art in some way, in some shape or form, because I love fashion. Fashion is something that, you know, I've always been interested in. I used to draw and sketch dresses in matric. The girls used to pay me to like sketch their matric dance dresses. So I always knew that I was artistic in some way. And when I did st start doing art, I think for me, what, you know, stands out is that I've never really wanted, you know, approval for my art. It's always been a way for me to express myself and do the one thing that I know that a lot of people can't do, you know, not everyone can draw, not everyone can paint. So you can't argue with me about something that I know how to do, you know. <laughs> so I've always been confident in my art. And yeah, I think that's the thing that makes me, you know, love my journey because I never worry, you know, when it comes to my arts, when I create an artwork for something, it's out of love, it's out of passion, you know, obviously skill comes into it. So when someone orders a commission from me and they get their artwork, it's the reaction when someone is like, wow, this is really me, like painted, you sat for six hours and painted me. And this is your expression of, you know, my image and stuff. So that for me, is always, you know, a highlighting moments is that this is why I do what I do. I recently did um, an artwork. Uh, this other guy ordered an artwork for his girlfriend. So they, oh, she only has one picture of her and her mom. Her mom passed away when she was very, very young. So the picture was very, very like, you know, it was old. It was very vintage, if I put it that way. So I had to do a lot of research on how to, you know, work on that and make it, you know, clearer and, you know, create a good artwork out of that. So I eventually did it and we, we you know, created to her and she even posted on Twitter and, you know, people were like amazed and stuff because she said she only had that one image of her mom and she couldn't, she couldn't even see it clearly. So as an artwork, it was, <clears throat> you know, translated in a way that she never thought could be translated. And she was so appreciative and she's like, you just brought alive the last moment, the one thing, the one memory I have of my mother. And it just came to me that, you know, this is why I do what I do. Art is not really about, you know, beauty sometimes. Sometimes, you know, art really does speak about social, political, you know, all these emotions that we have that we can't really express because some of us can't really, you know, go on Twitter and be those people who are loud and speak out all the time and argue with people about our points and all the knowledge that we have. Some of us can just draw an image, post it, and people relate in a way that they want to relate. They get the understanding that they want to get. And we don't have to fight and argue and push and shove for a point to get out there. You know, as an artist, I've really found my voice in my art without being violent, without arguing, without having to, you know, push myself onto other people. I just draw what I want to draw. I paint what I want to draw. I express myself. I post it. If somebody likes it, they like it. If they don't like it, they don't like it. You know, so it's, it's really simple when it comes to art. But I think one thing that I've learned, especially with my education, I learned that we as young people now we need to take the skills that we have something that cannot be taught like no one teaches you at school that you need to you know cultivate your skill and use that as a career you know you're always taught when i was in varsity i was taught to be a, a store manager i was never taught to own a retail brand and hire people i was never taught never not even in one textbook it's never you are the CEO at, you know, SAA and you no, know, there's such issues. What do you do? No, it's you are the a hostess at SAA and a customer is complaining about so-and-so, you know? So they, they never put that mindset in are, your head. Yeah, you that, these, are the cases, these were the cases that you studied and yeah, I, I wanna just tap into a few things that and highlight it as, as if you are there, we took a moment just now <laughs> To, to link to the personal story. And as you listened, we, we've heard Naledi pointing us to the beginnings of life growing up with a grandmom, and then in some way crossing into a school environment that said, treat the person as they want to be treated for the, the place and space they wanna be in their lives. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this reality is one that we, we wanna draw some energy from. And also Naledi, I love the way you said, Art helps you find help you find your voice. 
there are many uh, young people that are, are there that are out in our South Africa today that don't have their voices mm. um, and their voices have been taken away. And um, while you may not be an artist, or some of you might be like, okay, well, you, you're an artist, that's great for you. But I think the <laughs> principle is finding something that where you can add your voice. Um, mm. And so as, as we think about this uh, together today, we're tapping into the story of Naledi Zondi. Uh, and Naledi, as you shared from your personal story, here's a quotable quote. And this is a quote by Naledi where she says, no one can do what you do the way you do it. No one can do what you do the way you do it. Now, lady, just before I came in, I asked you about this case, you know, within your business school. Yeah, you were studying business, but mm -hmm. you pointed us to, if I can say, a lack of critical education where people mm -hmm. are being trained to be the worker bees of a system, but not owners. Mm -hmm. And this is a consciousness issue. But friends, here we have, Naledi saying to us, no one can do what you do the way you do it. Naledi, when you, when you tap into how, how you, you, you trained in the business administration academic arena, okay, yes. and then had to flip the script and say, hang on a second, how come I'm only being trained as someone who will work for the retail store, not own the brand? Yes. What does this quote have to do with your consciousness, with your understanding, with your pursuit of excellence? No one can do what you do the way you do it. So what's yes, your thought yes. leadership that you have to say to the many people that may see this resource and more especially in youth month, young people mm. and young entrepreneurs and young adults out there. Mm. So, so I think I, when I was sitting, I realized that, you know, Woolworths and Acres and um, maybe Pick and Pay, also, they're all retail brands, right? And they all sell similar stuff. So with Pick and Pay and Woolworths, You'll find food at Pick and Pay. You'll find food at Woolworths. You'll find clothing at Pick and Pay. You'll find clothing at, you know, at Woolworths. So what I realize is that sometimes we don't go into things because we feel like that industry is saturated. It's oversaturated. There's so many. I could have told myself, whoa, there are so many artists. There are so many artists. There are people that are incredible at what they do. There are a lot of people that studied art. I've met, you know, within my journey now, I've met a lot of artists that came out of DUT, um, which is where I studied, and they are doing incredibly well. Like, they're making so much money. And I could have just been there like, whoa, okay, I didn't study this. I can't go into it. I know nothing, you know, because this industry is oversaturated. There's enough artists to go around. But what I realized is that I think an advantage for me with not studying art and not being in varsity, you know, doing it and learning you know, those certain skills is that I come with a skill that nobody can teach me, you know, I didn't have to develop my own style because in varsity, you learn a certain, you know, way of doing things. There's a lecturer who teaches you their ways. And then as you learn the staple, you know, the, the basics, and then you start developing your own style and then you, you know, develop your own brand. And then you only, you know, people know that this is your work with me. That was just the, from the beginning, nobody could teach me art the way that I do it. So I created art the way that I felt was right for me, you know? So that's something that someone can't teach you. So if you feel like you want to be a makeup artist, there are so many makeup artists out there. There are a lot, believe me, like, sure, there are a lot, but no artist can do makeup the way that you would do it. So that's what makes your product different from another person's product. And that's something that I've realized in South Africa, we are so afraid of you know, going into a market, dissecting it and seeing the gap in that market. So I looked at art as an industry and then I looked at art and I was like, okay, what's missing from art right now in our country? And I realized that a lot of artists don't cater for people with a smaller budget. They don't cater for the traditional you know, market. They always go for, I want the white guy who has shares at you know some random company and has a Swiss account and they can afford to buy an artwork for 100,000. There's only like five of those guys. So with 10,000 artists, we can't be sharing that, you know, 10%, you know? So it's, it's a matter of looking at the industry, dissecting it and seeing where's the gap in the market. That's why I say I create art, I create everyday art for everyday people with everyday budgets. So every day, 
I know for a fact that there is someone who has that 50 rand and they are willing to say, you know what, I'm going to save and maybe have 150. And at the end of the month, I'm going to buy maybe a mug from you, like, or with your brand on it, or I'm going to buy a little, you know, A2 artwork or, you know, so people want to, they want to invest because they're captured by the story and they want to, you know, invest in what you're doing, but they can't afford it because now you're saying, I'm an artist, I can do something you can't do. My art is going for 100,000, take it or leave it, you know, then that's where the markets, you know, narrow. So if you looking at, you know, the markets, a lot of people love art, they just don't understand it. One thing that I've noticed is a lot of students come to my DMs on Instagram this, I want to study art, I'm really good at it. My parents are just like, no ways, you are not doing this. There's no money in this thing we're going to suffer and you know and so but there's a lot of money in art because I get a lot of jobs that sometimes even I can't do because I'm the only you know female that they know that's in art you know because now a lot of companies are forced to have this uh, equality and diversity so they when they hire male artists they need to find a female artist or they can't take that contract so they always come to me and say now lady we need you to join our contracts or this project that we're doing because we need diversity and we need, you know, equality. And then I can't do that. Maybe it's some digital art and I, I'm not good at that. I don't know. So there's not enough, you know, people coming into the industry. So people don't realize that it's actually a lot to be done, that there's a lot of space for a lot of different artists. It's just that we're so afraid and a lot of people do art as a hobby. So they don't really take it as you know their main work. So they don't don't really see the contracts and the projects and all these different things. Right now, I got a call to do um, murals. Um, so it was it's murals around the country, and it's just a message about COVID and uh, you know influencing people to get the vaccine. So they hand painted with the wording and then pictures of people at hospital, you know, people getting better and all these things. So obviously if it's around the country, that's like 60, close to hundred murals. And I'm the only female that they can find that can do this. The only female, that's a lot of work for just one female. And the, you, you, I had to search for people, you know, and search, go every corner that I know, you know, searching for people that can, you know, join in this project. So it just comes to show that there's a lot of opportunities. There are so many opportunities and it's not, it's not oversaturated. It's not at all. It's just that people see artists posting and think that, it, it, oh, okay, there's enough people to go around. Absolutely no one, no one can do, it's like a signature. No one can sign the way that you sign. So you're the only one with that signature. Everyone developed a signature. Everyone's making a signature, but no signature will ever be like your signature. So that's the point. Okay. Yeah. So basically. So, so, so just, just have a look at that, please. If, if you're an artist or not, you can see that Naled is talking the art game. There are many, there are many different forms of art. There's dig digital art. There are creatives in poetry. There are creatives in dance. There's a possibly an artist out there because I want to extend this. This mm. artist rhythm could be if you were a farmer and you're passionate about farming, look for the gap. I want to draw mm. out of this. If I can uh, say an experiential learning mind of Naleri Zondi, look at the market, look at what's going out there and find the gap. And when you find the gap, don't be stubborn about just working with the, you know, you said it, like I'm using your words, right? Mm. The white guy with lots of money and no disrespect mm. to the white, the white folk with lots of money. But we all can't be playing in that same ballpark. Let's find the gap in the industry, uh, mm -hmm. look out for it. But also, it takes some tenacious work for you to have this belief. And so, now, lady, I, I want to take a moment just to say why I believe in the power of storytelling and, mm -hmm. and, and working on people with who they are, where they come from. Many of our marginalized young people in South Africa have never even had a chance to wake up, look at themselves in the mirror and say, I am beautiful. Mm -hmm. just that self-recognition i mean when you yeah. can come and say you know nobody can do like what i do nobody can do it like me my signature is mine and mm -hmm. we don't have this uh, it's, it's not always embedded in our in our environment especially if we think about you know youth month and mm -hmm. the realities that we celebrated the global uh day uh, uh just uh, just uh on june 16th we also celebrated the global day for the african child many african mm -hmm. children are not trained to to kind of, you know, it's about me. Now there's 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 a side of it that's healthy because we don't want you to be all about you. But there are yeah. many children who've never considered 
you know, my vision, my mission, uh, mm -hmm. simple things that would seem simple, but actually they're fundamental in grounding who you are. So mm -hmm. a critical reflection in this, as you, as you think about what are the questions that we should be asking of our society? What are the questions that we should be asking as youth and young adults, and more especially as entrepreneurs out there? They may be artists, they may, they may not be, but what are, what are the set of questions that you've acquired over the, over the years to ask your clients, to ask about just you know the work that you're doing so that you can have a critical worldview of this world that we're in? I think one thing that I always critic is that I think when you're done with varsity and you don't have you know a routine that you have to follow you realize that you've spent 12 years of your life studying and getting yourself educated and maybe even another four years or you know and there are so many things that you still don't know I think what our country is struggling with is moving with the times at school we still learn to write you know uh, minutes for a meeting like we spend two weeks you know, doing this. And I look at it, I'm like, I've never written minutes for a meeting, like ever, ever, ever. Like now we have these Zoom meetings, no one's sitting on the side, you know, writing minutes, you know. So it's, it's, it's stuff like that, but that we need to change the way education, you know, is, 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 is set up in our country. And even in varsity, like I said, there are a lot of things that we're studying that won't help us when we, you know, working. So I think, there's a lot of questions that we need to be asking. And as a country and as the youth, we're very complacent. We're very, we complain, but we're doing nothing about it. And the way when we do do something about it, it's usually damaging. It's never like productive. So I think there are just a lot of changes that we need to make. There are a lot of questions that we need to be asking. We don't need, we, sh we shouldn't just be accepting, you know, things as they are. And sometimes I think as people, just because a situation doesn't affect you directly, then you don't do anything about it. You don't question it and you don't really care. So it's like with um, the war that's going on with the Palestine and all these kill killings that are happening. We don't repost, we don't care because it's not written Black Lives Matter or you know all these things and it's not trending and it's not the end thing and you won't look like you, you know, you, you are very open-minded or you understand what's happening around the world. So it's not trending because it's not affecting us. So if, if maybe, you know, um, it affected us directly, then we would be looking into it and we would be reacting or something. So I think with our youth right now, a lot of us don't really focus on a lot of things because it doesn't affect us directly. And now we're seeing the effects of it. 75% of the youth is not employed. You know, it's affecting us, but because a lot of people are posting, I've got the job on Twitter, we think, oh, okay, there's people getting jobs, so we're gonna be fine. We're gonna be, it's not gonna be fine. It's not gonna be okay. I'm part of that percentage of people that are not employed. And I thought that I was very, very employable, you know? So it's a reality and it's something that we're living in. My sister um, was in matric and she's, she's in her first year now. And it's scary for me, looking at her studying, knowing that there's a very good chance that she's not gonna get a job. And now we're starting to encourage her to, you know, what do you know, what do you know how to do? What do you love? What do you want to, you know, create as a product? And, you know, these are the, the conversations that we need to be having. And she started her own brand. She has her own company, she's selling her products and that's how it begins, you know? So it's, it's so scary living in our country now. And <clears throat> we need to start teaching the youth to fend for themselves and the skills, basic skills, just you need to be taught that, okay, cool. You know, you don't, you can't rely on the government for a lot of things, you know, don't do this whole thing. I'm gonna get us stipends, I'm gonna, you know, let, we need to get out of that mindset now and start thinking ahead and teaching our kids that you need to, you know, start something from a young age. <clears throat> we need to do more of, if a, a student, let's say I pass matric, and I have no, you know, desire whatsoever to, you know, have a job that's more academic or something that I need to study for, like an engineer or whatever. And if I want to be an artist, right? So what should happen is that take the money, if, if your family has money, right, and they had saved money for you to go and, you know, study, maybe take a year, study a business course, so you understand business, obviously. And then with the rest of the money, 
invest in your business, start your studio, get materials, get your equipment. If you want to go into photography, buy the camera, buy you know the studio equipment, start your studio, and then you start making money. Don't waste four years in varsity studying something that you don't care about. All that money, do you know how hard it is to study? Even just going to school daily, that money that you have to use, that's resources that you could be using to you know, fund your business. So we, we, we shouldn't be in this mindset of just, you get out of high school, you go to varsity, you wait for a job. Go to high school, go to varsity, wait for a job. If you feel that there are a lot of people that are more creative now, there's a lot of jobs that you don't need to study. Like if you do one year, maybe of social media management, then you have that basic knowledge. Then you go straight into it and, you, and that's your job. So we need to start opening our minds that we don't have to you know, follow the same routine. There are lots of different ways of living life now. And a lot of, I feel like a lot of other races have been doing it, we just didn't know. There are a lot of people where if your family has a store or retail store, the kids will go to high school and go straight to work at the family store and they're successful driving big cars and they really didn't need, if they did go to varsity, they'd go to varsity and still work at the family store. So we need to start, you know, opening up our minds to not following that same, you know, that same routine, you know? So, yeah. So, uh, and again, we don't want to say this in, in a way of that we're bashing education. I mean, I work uh, in oh, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and what we want to do, say, what we want to say is if you are uh, moving towards education, make sure that the education fits your life plan and your yes. focus. And then when you mm -hmm. engage in that education, it's going to make sense for you. Um, I can speak from a little experience. Uh, mm. Some years ago, I, I wanted to study, but I never studied. I, I finished mm. high school and then I started to do part-time work. So if you've had that kind of a tradition, and for me, in my own journey, I cut hose mm. pipes for an air conditioning company. I worked mm. at, a, at a retail store in a pharmaceutical company. People asked mm. me, hey, Seth, so what are you doing over there? And now, lady, this is what mm. I said to him. I told him, and this is now my self-efficacy. I said yeah. to them, I'm a till engineer. They said, what? <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm a till engineer. They said, what? what's a till engineer? And I was, I was doing sales. So as people came in, yeah. I, was, I was basically cashing them out at the store, you know, yes. working through barcoding and stuff, packaging it. Yeah. But I was telling a story of me engineering that till. Mm. Um, and it was always a good laugh out when friends said, you're a till engineer. You mean yes. you're a I said, yeah, man, but it's the way that you see the world. Uh, yes. And yet at the same time, we want to acknowledge 75% of unemployment. If you are out there mm -hmm. and you are an influential person who has access, mm -hmm. please begin to think about opportunities where we can contract with entrepreneurs, young people, mm -hmm. and, and people that, that want to get out there and make opportunities uh, alive. The other reality is, yes, for many of us, we, we talk about self-efficacy and so on. But sometimes mm. I want to say, Naleri, it's important that we can lend a helping hand. Mm. Not everybody's going to be at the same space of life. They're going to, you know, come out and, hey, I'm beautiful. I'm wonderful. I can make this happen. I got some yeah. family money. Some people are starting from ground zero. Uh, yeah. And I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate that over the years of, of, my, of my life, I've seen a few entrepreneurs come out from with zero, but mm. have a thought an idea and keep yeah. pitching that idea. But Mm -hmm. But you got to have the skills. You got to know how to put that idea out there. Yes. So if you're out there, I mean, I, I, and this is what I want to say to to young people out there. If you're mm -hmm. out there and you have interest, maybe make connections. Now, lady, my 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 call out to you is: if people are out there and they want to get connected, like to your project. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, lady spoke about the project now with this, you know, COVID nineteen project that project that she's doing. Think about it like yeah. this: communities of practice. If I am making access and I know I can give a helping hand to somebody else. It's mm. not now me giving them a helping hand that they become a slave to the system. No, it's, but maybe I could set somebody on their way, set them on their way so that they too can open up access, maybe get yeah. into some kind of learnership. But mm. again, free ourselves from stipends, free ourselves mm. from waiting on business or waiting on mm. government or waiting yeah. on an NGO. We got to go after what we want. Now, lady, mm. as we close, uh, you know, the, the thought to, towards our future. For many folk, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm drawing this morning from a W.E. Du Bois quote. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was written by a, a, a colleague, Jarvis, Jarvis Givens, reflecting mm -hmm. on Juneteenth. Because in the, in the States, uh, as uh, June 19th, it's interesting as we speak about Youth Month, 
They are mm. reflecting on June 19 becoming this day to observe when mm. it was the ending of slavery. Yes. But the story to be told is two and a half years later, after Abraham Lincoln abolished slavery, only two mm. and a half years later in Texas, did mm. some black African Americans become aware that they were free. It also reminds sure. me of a story like a few years ago, I worked in India with, uh, with an organization called IJM, International Justice Mission. Mm -hmm. And they told me many people are working as slaves in a modern India because they don't know. They work yeah. a whole day only for a piece of bread. Yes. So this whole idea of freeing our minds and from, from what, what enslaves us. Uh, mm -hmm. But the W.E. Du Bois quote that Jarvis quoted was, you know, I'm not, uh, and, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing his quote, but it, it said something like this, it went like this. I'm not hopeless, mm. but I am unhopeful because I'm black. Yes. So it's that idea that I'm in the stand and that I, I see the reality. I am hopeful, mm. but I'm hopeful with reality that not everything's gonna work out the way I want it to. It's gonna take yes. a equity. It's gonna take a courageousness. It's gonna take mm -hmm. making context. It's gonna take getting your brand out there to break through. Mm -hmm. What hope yeah. can we, as we close our show today, which has been an awesome conversation with you, what can we speak to young people as a possibly some, some insights and ways to make things happen? I mean, I'm sure like you, you've got your sister, you've got your business, Naledi Arts out there, but what can we say to youth, young adults, unemployed folk out there, young entre entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. how can they keep the hustle alive? What say you, Naledi Zondi? Um, well, I don't think I'm an expert in like giving advice on that because I'm also in that situation right now. But all I can say is that um, I think one thing we need to realize is that this is the time for us to panic. Like if there was ever a time for us to wake up and realize what the world has come to now and what we're living in. When I heard like the, the statistics of unemployment of the youth and I realized that I'm a part of it, it brought this feeling of panic that, oh my gosh, like I, I'm an unemployed youth and I need to like do something about it. I need, as much as this started as my passion, now I'm obliged to make it work, you know, because there is no other option. So I think that's something that we have to like drill into our brains that it's no longer about hobbies and what you like and what you know is that, that, that ticket to success you now we can rely on our skills and what we know fundamentally that's what tickets is it's no longer about hobbies this is the time where use every strength that you have to you know cultivate from what you know from the basics if baking is what you know bake sell create capital and then do what you want to do if you know how to sing be a backup vocalist, uh, do ad libs. And if you have a great voice, go do voiceovers. There are a lot of things that we can do now. The world is changing and there are so many more new opportunities. There are people that get paid to taste food, you know? There are people that get paid to watch videos and test videos and see if these video games are like, you know, good. So these are like, there's so many different things. There are kids, my brother loves playing video games and that could be a job opportunity for him. So we need to open up our minds and stop having this routine mindset that you need to be a doctor, you need to be a nurse, you need to be an engineer, you need to be, you know, in an office, or you need to be a CA. Like we need to start opening our minds and seeing that the world is moving to a digital world. It's more creative. There are a lot of people that are, you know, you know, using their skills and their knowledge and their passion to create businesses. You can work from home now, you can have your own hours. We just, we need to, you know, get into that mindset that I need to use what I know, my gift, package it and sell it. That's wow. literally all that I can think of, yeah. Take your panic or your passion, whichever you like, mm -hmm. but drive mm -hmm. it towards your purpose, your productivity mm -hmm. and your mm -hmm. excellence. I'm, 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 mm -hmm. I'm copycatting right there from, <laughs> right there. She's telling mm -hmm. you, take your panic. If you don't have a purpose, find your panic. <laughs> Yes. I'm gonna be unemployed, and she found Naledi Art. <laughs> yes, so, yes. Okay, that's a that's a that's an amazing way to close out. Naledi, mm -hmm. it would be sad if we never saw. I mean, we got the cameras on you via mm -hmm. Zoom on the Facebook Live. Is there a piece mm -hmm. of art that 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 we, that we could show some folk right there? Um, right there's now? a lot of art actually. I don't know which one. Okay, let me show you this one. Wow. I don't know if it's visible, like copy. 
Yes, yes, yes. That's, is, that's is ink. This the artwork of the mum of of the of the the commission piece you were doing that you told uh, us. About. Oh no, she she has it. She has, oh, it. She has it. Yeah, and then there's this one of Zozi, this universe. Wow, 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 wow. There we go. Was that commissioned by Zozi? No, this was for my exhibition. So what it spoke about was, as you can see, she's looking to the side. So it was about a profile series. So we don't focus on people's aesthetics. We focus on what they've done and the contributions that they have to society. So we see the beauty of actions instead of, you know, facial beauty. Aha. Uh -huh. Zozi, if you're out there, please contact <laughs> me. My name is Zozi. And if you're out there, uh, we hope today that you that you felt encouraged about just, you know, this reality that the, the world might have its crisis like it is. We're living in COVID-19. Mm -hmm. We are aware mm -hmm. that many of us have faced the loss of loved ones. There's grief. Please be safe and well. But in this youth yeah. month, as we've had this focus, it's been such an honor to, to have you in studio today, Naledi. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for speaking to us of your insights. And also, just the, the, the tenacious belief that you can make it. And take mm. your panic. I'm going to take that with me. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, Naledi has only, only said this. But take your panic and drive it towards your purpose. If, it, if you don't mm. have passion, at least get get working with your panic. Uh, yes. So yeah, thank you um, for for taking the time, and uh, I, I wish you well on this weekend and with this project. Please keep in touch. Uh, if yeah. you're out there, I'm going to ask Naledi to just tell us in closing where we can contact and get in touch with her. She's got a CSI project that she's running. Uh, it's a blanket drive for winter. I know KwaZulu Natal is 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 it's not as cold as the rest of the country. But mm -hmm. there is a blanket drive happening there in in uh, <laughs> yes. So yeah. and then also just tell us where people can get connected with you. Uh, so over okay. to you as you as you give us those details. All right. So firstly, for the blanket drive, um, there are two drop off locations. So it's daily dosage on three Miller streets in Ungeni area, and then there's uh, at the gallery store at Musgrave Center. So with the blanket drive, it's either you donate a. a pre-loved blankets, but in good condition, or new blankets, or you donate cash. Also, we've um, you know, started working with another NPO called Ubuntu, and they are collecting um, pads, uh, sanitary pads for schools uh, with girls, obviously. So you can donate pads as well. And then with my contact details, so on Instagram, it's naledi underscore arts, simply just naledi underscore arts on twitter as well and then on facebook it's naledi arts and then the business page is shop naledi arts so on there i sell my merchandise i sell my art and yeah you can also you know get a commission on there and then i don't know about numbers with the numbers and all you you'll find it on the social media because then people forget so it's naledi underscore arts on instagram and twitter naledi zondi on facebook shop naledi arts on facebook with the work page yes so what I'll do is I will get Naledi to just WhatsApp me all of that brilliant text, uh, mm -hmm. the text of what she just said, of where to get a Twitter handle and so on. And we'll put it on the Facebook Live uh, link to this video in the comments section. Naledi, thank mm -hmm. you for your time. I hope you've enjoyed being with us on In Such a Time as This. Those mm -hmm. of you that out there, be encouraged. It's either from your passion to your purpose or from your panic to your purpose. <laughs> and this yes. is our, let us play out on, on this show with um, Imos Marad, I'm, I'm bringing you a piece that I did last week. I feel like his music is, is linking to critical hip hop. Naledi, you're welcome to hang out for a moment if you wanna, if you wanna jam with us. You can keep I your will. camera, on, but, but we can mute our mics. As we close, close out with, um, with Imos Marad and, and this beautiful, beautiful piece of music that he, uh, he entitles Irony. So here we go with Imos Marad. And thank you again to Naledi Zondi for joining us uh, for another session of conversational story sharing. What's your story with Naledi Zondi? Uh, let's enjoy this piece of music. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, we are, you are. Yeah, come on, yeah, let's do it. Like this. Check it out, check it out. Yo, I'm not sure anymore, more who is knocking at my door, door. All the people that I knew, 
Acting funny when I O speaks the truth. But I don't care, let my cerebellum fly, fly. Cause I be the child of the most high, high. Never me, oh me, oh my, my. And my life to him, I can't deny. Nah, I'm not sure anymore, more. Who is knocking at my door, door? All the people that I knew. Acting funny when I O speaks the truth. But I don't care, let my cerebellum fly, fly. Cause I be the child of the most high, high Never me, oh me, oh my, my And my life to him I can't deny Yo, hey, yo, I So there we, there we have it. Thank you to Imos and thank you to Naleri Zondi for being in studio with us today. She's still here on camera. Naleri, thank you so much for joining with us uh, and taking the time to come in from your studio at uh, Naleri Art. So uh, if you're out there and you got the details of, of Naleri, um, you know, please be in touch. So from me here in LA, Lower Alberton, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank Naleri, you. you the, the, thank the, you so the, much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And we're closing out the show right now. Peace out. Till next time.